Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be working on a low poly old style cottage. This is very much meant as a beginner's tutorial so it will be a slow pace but I won't be going through the entire interface in detail. Do check out the other playlist on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay, we'll start by tidying up the interface very slightly. I'm just going to right click between these two viewports and join areas. You get this arrow and I'll bring it down to this viewport here and click. So we don't need the timeline down there and it will just get in the way. Okay, we'll use the default cube. So we'll select that with left click and we're going to scale this so it's a wooden beam. So I'll scale in the Z. So press S to scale. So it's nice and big like this and then scale it all down so it's the shape of a wooden beam. Scale in the Z a bit more, so around there. So a nice chunky beam. Now when we do that sort of scaling, if I press N on my keyboard now and go to the item, you can see that the scale is now non-uniform. We've got the dimensions there, which is slightly different to the scale, and whenever you're modeling with any modifiers, you need these set to one ideally. You'll understand why Blender does that later on, and if you want to avoid this happening, you can scale it whilst in edit mode. If I press Ctrl A now, I get this menu, and I can actually apply that scale, and you can see them all change to 1. So now when I add any modifiers to this, they won't act unusually. So if I come across to the modifier properties here, add modifier, we're going to add a bevel modifier to this, and you can see it creates this sort of bevel around the outside. You can up these segments if you want it really rounded. I'm going to keep mine on 1 and you can change the offset here and that's how much it sort of bevels it and I think somewhere around there looks good. It's nice to give it a tiny bit of roundness like this. It stops everything looking really sharp. So now if I go into edit mode with tab I can start editing this shape. There's not much I want to do but I want to do two loop cuts so Control R for a loop cut. Use my wheel to create two so you can increase the amount of loop cuts with the wheel of your mouse and left click to select and then I can select where I want them I can just right click to say I want them in that even position there. You can always change things with the dialog box that comes out here and you can see my number of cuts there and you can kind of change where it is with the factor. What I'm going to do next is press R to rotate to give it a slight bit of distortion. So just round to the side and R to rotate again and you can see we've got a beam that's not quite perfect. It helps your scene to kind of mimic reality when things are a tiny bit less perfect. Okay, so we've got one beam there. If I tab to go back into object mode, we can see that, and we can now start thinking about the shape of our cottage. I'll go to front view with one on my numpad. Let's just think about the dimensions quickly. This will help us when it comes to other things later on in the scene. A modern door is about two meters tall. A cottagey door is probably going to be a bit smaller than that. And currently ours is around 3.9 meters. So we need to make it a bit smaller. So I'll just scale it down. And you can see again my scale changing here. So I'll quickly show you how that looks if we do it in edit mode. So I'll undo that, tab into edit mode, select all with A on your keyboard and scale down. And I'm going to go around two meters. Each of these big grid blocks are a meter. So around about there, back into object mode and you can see they're still at one. So it's useful to know that if you want to keep this at one without having to press control A and apply the scale to scale things in edit mode instead. Okay, let's move this into position by pressing G to grab. Let's move it above the floor I'll call the x-axis the floor, going across there. And let's rotate it around so that it's at a slight angle. Probably around here. Just move that into position. I think roughly 2 meters for the width of the base. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this one with Shift D. Move it across to the side and rotate that. And move it out there. So we're going to have a cottage that sort of comes out this way. Perhaps that's a bit wider. I'll just bring them in a bit and make sure they intersect the floor just there. And this looks fine. I want to make one smaller than the other. So if I select on one and scale in the Z axis, you can see it distorts the shape slightly when it scales. But if I press Z twice, it chooses the local Z axis. So it takes into account the rotation I've added to it. And I can set it there, G to grab, and we're going to have a roof coming up here and across down to here. They might be a bit too angled at the moment, so I'll move those slightly. And you can adjust your shapes as you see fit. The main thing is to get one side first and then we can duplicate that to the other side. So I'll move my viewport upwards, duplicate this again, Shift D. And if I want to remove this angular rotation at any point, I can press Alt R to remove rotation. Alt is often the undo of many commands. 
So Alt G and Alt S to remove movement and scale. Now if I press R90, it will rotate at 90 degrees. And you can see my rotation up here. I'm going to scale this in the X axis. I can use the local Z as well by pressing Z twice, but the X axis is going to do the same thing here. When we're in front view like this, and just make that nice and big, so it goes across the cottage there, and then I want a beam going up here and down there. So it's a wonky cottage. I'll use this one again, Shift D, move it over to here, and angle that slightly so it goes up to the roof. And I'm going to go to edit mode for this because I want a slight curve on my roof. So into edit mode, and if I select these vertices at the bottom here by box selecting those and press G to grab, you can see it's only selected the front ones. So I need to go up to wireframe mode here. Alt Z is the shortcut for that. And box select this at the bottom here, G to grab, and move that into position. Overlapping the shapes is fine, and I can rotate those with R. G to grab to add that bit of curve. So I'm just box selecting these objects and moving them into position. That looks fine at the moment. Let's go back into object mode, duplicate that, Shift D, move it across to the side, and RZ180. That will rotate it in the Z axis 180 degrees and press Enter. So RZ or Z180. I can then scale this down and remember to press Z twice and that will scale it in the Z. It does change and deform the shape very slightly in this case, but it's only very slight, so that's fine. So around there, G to grab, move that into position, and rotate it slightly, and that's all working well. Let's resize this one. So I can scale in the X axis or I can go into edit mode and select these end vertices here, G to grab in the X and move that across, and that's all working well. So we're starting to get a frame now we need some small supporting beams. So I'm going to duplicate one of these again, Shift D. And I'll just scale it all down a bit so it's a bit thinner all around, and then scale in the X. So it's a smaller sized beam all around. G to grab, move that into position, and just scale it as you see fit. I'm trying to keep them a uniform thickness though, so I'm only scaling the X axis in this case. Shift D to duplicate. Rotate around here and scale ZZ, remember that local Z axis there, and move it into position. And shift each duplicate, rotate, and scale ZZ. And not too accurate, so it's a bit higgledy-piggledy. That's definitely a real word. Shift each duplicate down here and we'll have a sort of supporting one up the corner here. Okay, that's good. Let's draw out the door shape. I'll use this one at the top here, shift D, because that's already flat. And shift D, R90. Grab that, move that into position, and scale in the Z. And Shift D to duplicate along the X axis to the other side. Okay, that's good. We've got that first section there, and we can select all those. Shift D to duplicate and move them back in the Y, somewhere around there. The last thing for me to add is a big beam going across the top there. As a quick challenge, pause the video and have a go at that by yourself. Okay, I can easily take one of these beams here, Shift D to duplicate, and move it upwards in the Z axis. RZ90 to rotate it round, and let's go to side view with three on my numpad. G to grab, move it into position, and scale it up so it's nice and big. So this is going to be quite a thick beam, so I'll scale it to somewhere around here. But if I go to front view, I don't want it quite as wide, so I'll scale in the X there. And let's just move that into position. That looks good, but it's very straight, so into edit mode and we can select these here and G to grab in the Z and just sort of make it this nice curved shape here. You can distort it even more slightly, maybe R to rotate and scale up one end just so it looks a bit more interesting. And there we've got the basic structure of our house. We don't really need any more than that because the other parts will be covered up so we'll be able to build those other parts in the next session. So quite simply we've taken one shape, add a bevel modifier to it so it looks nice and rounded and then we've just duplicated and adapted that shape all around. So make sure you check the links in the description for the rest of the playlist. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.